the song that became a mantra. Fourteenth August, nineteen forty-seven, midnight. The streets outside Parliament House. Let me now uh, hand the microphone to the crowd for a second to give you an idea of how enthusiastic they still are. Uh, masses of people, a sea of faces, all glistening with enthusiasm, and I am lifting the microphone about a foot above my head. Inside the Darbal Hall of Parliament House, the transfer of power ceremony had just ended. It is indeed a very significant moment, not only in the history of India, but in the history of the world. And for such a moment, this is a fitting setting. Now, the, the, the next step will be, well, the President is just getting up now to uh, put another resolution from the chair. I propose that it should be intimated to the Viceroy that the Constituent Assembly of India has assumed power for the governance of India. अपने Constituent Assembly से Assembly की कार्रवाई का हाल सुना। हम अपने सुनने वालों को भारत माता की सुंदरता पर हार्दिक बधाई देते हैं। आखिर में हीराबाई बरोतकर से वंदे मात्रम सुनिए। वंदे मात्रम The midnight proceedings had begun with the rendering of Vande Mataram by Sucheta Kripalani, and at the end of the ceremony, All India Radio had invited the then prima donna of Indian classical music, Hirabai Barodikar, to sing Vande Mataram as the most befitting finale for the great occasion. She sang Vande Mataram in her own style, setting the song to the happy and joyous notes of the rag Tilak Kamod. The august gathering of statesmen, political thinkers, social leaders who watched the Indian tricolour unfurl also knew that soon they will have to sit and decide a place for this historic song in the political and social fabric of independent India. The song was composed by Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay, the great Bengali writer of the 19th century around 1875. 
for inclusion in his monthly periodical Bongo Darshan. It is written in a hybrid language, a mixture of Sanskrit and Bengali. I bow to the mother, richly watered, richly fruited, cool with the winds of the south, dark with the crops of the harvests, the mother. Her nights rejoicing in the glory of the moonlight, her lands clothed beautifully with the trees in flowering bloom, sweet of laughter, sweet of speech, the mother, giver of boons, giver of bliss, terrible with the clamorous shout of 70 million throats and the sharpness of swords raised in twice 70 million hands. Who saith to thee, mother, that thou art weak? Holder of multitudinous strength, I bow to her who saves, to her who drives from her the armies of her foemen, the mother. Thou art knowledge, thou art conduct, thou art heart, thou art soul, for thou art the life in our body. In the arm thou art might, O mother, in the heart, O mother, thou art love and faith. It is thy image we raise in every temple, for thou art Durga, holding her tent weapons of war, Kamala at play in the lotuses, and speech the goddess, giver of all law. To thee I bow. I bow to thee, goddess of wealth, pure and peerless, richly watered, richly fruited, the mother. I bow to thee, mother, dark-hued, candid, sweetly smiling, jeweled and adorned, the holder of wealth, the Lady of Plenty, the Mother. The proofreader of Banga Darshan, himself a scholar of Sanskrit, was not happy with the hybrid language of the song. His adverse comments had annoyed Bankim Chandra, who had taken back the piece of paper and had retorted angrily. And we quote, What this song is, you will know a few years later. I will not be alive to see its impact, but you will see. <laughs> Bunkim's words were truly prophetic. Seven years later, in 1882, when Bunkim Chandra included this song in his novel Anandmat, the song Vande Mataram found an independent identity and was an instant success. Both the story of the novel as well as the words of the song suggest that the motherland contemplated by Bunkim was Bengal. However, Within six years of its publication, another Bengali poet, Hemtandra Banerjee, hailed the song as a national song of the people of India. It became the inspiration for a picture of Mother India painted by Harishchandra Haldar. Another writer of patriotic themes, Yogendranath Vidya Bhushan, pleaded for widespread use of the song for patriotic purposes. At the 12th annual session of the Indian National Congress held in Calcutta in 1896 under the presidentship of Rahmatullah Sayani, the tradition to sing Vande Mataram as the invocation song began. The singer was the poet Rabindranath Tagore, who had composed the music for it and had it approved by Bankim a few years before Bankim died in 1894.
Seven crores in the original version referred to the notional population of Bengal, which was the region where the Sanyasi rebellion of Anandamat was located. To make the song relevant on an all India scale, Tagore's niece, Sharala Devi Chaudhurani, herself a composer of great talent, changed the words to Trinshakoti, 30 crores, when she sang the song at the opening session of the Congress in 1905 at Varanasi. Her presentation of the song bears close resemblance to this rendering by Ustad Hafiz Ahmad Khan. was also the year when the first two words of the song Vande Mataram was used as a battle cry for the first time. Lord Curzon's plan to partition Bengal was officially announced on 19th July 1905. Bengal was up in arms. Vande Mataram! At the town hall in Calcutta on 7th August, the famous resolution to boycott foreign goods was greeted with the cry Vande Mataram. The Swadeshi movement in Bengal evoked sympathies all over India. Bipin Pal, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Lala Lajpat Rai lustily shouted Vande Mataram as they led the young nationalists ready to take up arms against the oppressive British rule. Tales of their bravery while facing brutal assaults by the British Raj with Vande Mataram on their lips began to be heard. Processions were taken out with young men wearing Vande Mataram badges. Vande Mataram was printed on invitation cards. In October 1905, a society called Vande Mataram Sampraday was formed in Calcutta. A profusion of patriotic songs began to be composed by writers and poets expressing adulation to the native land as a mother figure with the phrase Vande Mataram used as a refrain. Mago jai jano jivan chole, shudhu jagat maje tomar kaje Vande Mataram bole, amar jai jano jivan chole. 
The government of East Bengal and Assam, in a bid to contain this sudden upsurge of militant nationalism, banned the song and the shouting of Vande Mataram in public places. The order only added fuel to fire. The Tribune, published from Punjab, wrote on 25th November 1905, and can Vande Mataram be abolished by help of terrorism? News of the song reached Mahatma Gandhi in faraway South Africa. In the column he used to write in Gujarati in the periodical Indian Opinion, he wrote on 2nd December 1905. The song, it is said, has proved so popular that it has come to be our national anthem. It is nobler in sentiment and sweeter than the songs of other nations. While other anthems contain sentiments that are derogatory to others, Vande Mataram is quite free from such faults. Its only aim is to arouse in us a sense of patriotism. Just as we worship our mother, so is this song a passionate prayer to India. The identification of one's native land as the mother goddess is a tradition that goes back to the Ramayana where occurs the shloka Janani Janma Bhumishya Svargadapi Gariyasi. The concept of the song was not new to Indian sentiments, but as Sri Aurobindo had rightly pointed out, in a sudden moment of awakening from a long delusion, Vande Mataram, the mantra had been given, and in a single day, a whole people had been converted to the religion of patriotism. The song and the sentiments it conveyed began to echo in different languages. Subramanya Bharati, the greatest Tamil poet of this century, translated the song and also wrote two poems, both entitled Vande Mataram. Its appeal extended even to Indian languages which were not closely related to Sanskrit but had a strong infusion of Arabic and Persian, namely Urdu. As the great Urdu scholar, Professor Gopi Chand Narang says, Jis shaks ne isko zaban di sabse pehle Urdu mein, wo hain ek bhoat achche kavi hain, aur nazm ke kavi hain, aur late 19th century, yun ka yi aakhir unisvi shatap di, aur shuru bismi sadi ke, jin ka naam hai Durga Sahai Surur Jahan Abadi. नज़मों के नाम हैं उरूसे हुब्बे वतन, चश्माए वतन, फूलों का कुंज, सरज़मीने वतन और एक नज़म का तो नाम ही है मादरे हिंद, यानी भारत मेरी माँ। अब जरा ये बन देखिए, तेरा देव स्थान देवी दिल के काशाने में है, तेरी तस्वीरे मुकद्दस हर सनम खाने में है। अब वो भारत को माँ के तौर पर पुकार रहे हैं। लक्ष्मी तू है जमाने में उजाला है तेरा हर कमल का फूल पानी में शिवाला है तेरा सरस्वती का रूप है दुर्गा का है अवतार तू नुतको दानिश की है देवी मादेरे गमखार तू इंस्पायर्ड बाय द सॉन्ग द ओडिया पोएट लक्ष्मीकांत महापात्र रोट वंदे उत्कला जननी व्हिच इन इट्स ट्यून एंड जनरल टेनर इज कंपेरेबल टू वंदे मातरम इन ऑगस्ट 1906 Bipin Chandrapal launched a new English daily and invited Aurobindo Ghosh from Baroda to join him in this venture. The weekly was named Vande Mataram and the meteoric political career of Aurobindo began with his first editorial. Vande. Aurobindo's articles in Vande Mataram created in the minds of his readers an image of India as a living and pulsating spiritual entity. India was the mother, but a mother in chains, a mother enslaved and humiliated by alien aggressors, a mother oppressed and starved by her foreign rulers. What is the duty of sons who find their mother, their goddess, 
reduced to this pitiable plight. Full and complete liberation was Aurobindo's only demand, and his battle cry was, Vande Mataram. The first victory of this fervor and intensity that Vande Mataram generated was the annulment of the partition of Bengal at the Delhi Darbar in 1911. The annulment also showed how a public movement could be inspired by a song and how two simple innocent words could strike terror in the heart of a tyrant. <laughs> The Vande Mataram slogan continued to hold its magic for politically committed people. It was feared by the British and hailed by the intellectuals as a divinely inspired expression of nationalism. It was extensively used by Gandhiji and his followers in the non-cooperation movement in the early 20s. Even in the 1942 Quit India movement, people faced bullets and lati charge with Vande Mataram on their lips. But the song Vande Mataram, which did not have any standardized tune, could not establish the same definite identity as the slogan. However, it showed the importance of music in our struggle for independence. With the passage of time, more and more patriotic songs were composed to arouse the passion of the people. <laughs> At the Calcutta session of the Indian National Congress in 1911, Vande Mataram was only one of the three songs sung during the three days of the session. The other two were Janagana Mana by Rabindranath Tagore and Namo Hindustan by Sharala Devi Chaudhurani. For his INA national anthem, Subhash Chandra Bose chose a Hindi song set to the tune of Janagana Mana. And that music has become an imperial part of our legacy and the heritage of our freedom struggle. In the mid-40s, it became abundantly clear that India could not be denied independence for long. Along with deliberations on the Constitution of India, the discussions began for the final decision on Vande Mataram status and a national anthem for the country. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, who was Minister for Information and Broadcasting in the interim government, suggested that All India Radio should begin to broadcast Vande Mataram occasionally. However, the Director General of All India Radio, Mr. Bukhari, stated that anthems of this kind must adhere to one single commonly accepted tune. The idea was readily accepted, 
An All India Radio was asked to collect recordings of Vande Mataram rendered by eminent music artists from all over India. On the 15th of August 1947 morning, All India Radio began its transmission with a rendering of Vande Mataram by Pandit Omka Nath Thakur. The final standardized tune for Vande Mataram and Janaganamana were arranged with the help of the military band by a British composer, Herbert Murrell. The final decision about Vande Mataram status was declared by Dr. Rajendra Prasad. On 24th January, Two days before the Republic of India was proclaimed, Dr. Prasad said, and we quote, There is one matter which has been pending for discussion, namely the question of the national anthem. At one time it was thought that the matter might be brought up before the House and a decision taken by the House by means of a resolution. But it has been felt that it's better if I make a statement with regard to the national anthem. Accordingly, I make this statement. The composition consisting of the words and music known as Janaganamana is the national anthem of India, subject to such alteration in the words as the government may authorize as occasion arises. And the song Vande Mataram, which has played a historic part in the struggle for Indian freedom, shall be honoured equally with Janaganamana and shall have equal status with it. <laughs> 